What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. Thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week, you don't wanna miss them. Today I have a very special guest who's gonna tell us all about the field of ENT as well as facial plastics, why he went into it, and also some tips for students out there that may be interested in the field. Dr. Truesdale, welcome man, and uh, thank you for joining me today. Thank you so much, and like I said before, thank you for inviting me onto this platform. I think you're doing a, a really big service to the culture. Uh, you know, positive black men and women, people doing big things, positive influences. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Absolutely. Uh, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and tell the viewers out there who you are and kind of what you do. Cool. So uh, my name is Dr. Carl uh, Truesdale. I am a fifth year otolaryngology resident, had a neck surgery resident at the University of Michigan. Uh, so I'm going to be completing my training in this specialty um, in June. So I'm looking forward to the end of kind of that portion of my training, but I'll be uh, going to Beverly Hills to complete my fellowship, which is one year in facial plastic and reconstructive surgery starting next July. So uh, looking forward to that. Awesome. And kind of thinking back to your med school days, what was it about ENT that got you interested? Or were you interested in anything else besides ENT or you knew the whole time ENT? So once I got to medical school, I realized that I wanted to be a surgeon. I love the idea of using my hands. I do a lot with my hands. Um, you're able to kind of make a, a, a positive effect on someone's life. You get to use your hands, use the anatomy and see kind of an immediate uh, change. So. I realized that I wanted to do something in a surgical subspecialty. There was a career panel where a lot of different surgeons came and spoke, and one of my mentors-to-be uh, spoke about otolaryngology, uh, or ENT. Uh, so people kind of get confused with the name, but ENT, or ear, nose, throat, otorhinolaryngology, or head and neck surgery, yeah. all of those different names, um, it really drew me in. And I love the field. I was thinking about plastic surgery as well as emergency medicine. But what it came down for me is the mentorship and just I love what we do as head and neck surgeons. And um, I'll just kind of give you the spiel that got me really excited about the field. So within ENT or otorhinolaryngology, we do all of the medical and surgical aspects above the shoulder minus the eyes and brain. That's the way I like to kind of tell people. And so there is no medical counterpart to what we do in the ear, nose, and throat. So if there are, you know, as uh, there might be a cardiac surgeon, but then there's also cardiologists. And the ear, nose, and throat, we're it. So you kind of have to know a lot, which I really love. We deal, so the different subspecialties within my field are uh, otology, so that's ear surgery or anything that has to do with hearing rhinology or sinus, anything that has to do with smell or the sinus cavities, head and neck oncology, so head and neck cancers of all the different parts of the ear, nose, throat, uh, tongue, neck, all of that. We deal, we take out that cancer, we manage those patients. Laryngology, so everything that has to do with your voice, voice, voice surgery, uh, you know, um, affecting kind of the vocal cords, we do that. Sleep surgery, Pediatric otolaryngology, uh, skull base, which is having to do with the bones and kind of where all the surfaces, where all the nerves leave the skull and any processes that happen at that area. So, uh, and then facial plastic and reconstructive surgery, which is what I'll be going into, uh, you know, focusing my career on specifically. So that's all cosmetic and reconstructive aspects, traumas. Botox, filler, facelifts, all of that is also within uh, ENT. So it's a great field, a lot of uh, detail, a lot that you require to know. It's surgery. Um, you get to really affect, affect patients' lives. You get to uh, basically be an emergency doctor in terms of airway. You're kind of an airway expert and save lives that way. But you can also take care of people who aren't that sick. So it has so much for everyone, it's an amazing field, I love it. That's awesome, and congratulations on matching into facial plastics. I imagine that's a pretty competitive fellowship to get, especially in Beverly Hills, so congratulations. Um, and, Thank you. And can you speak about the education that's required? We all know that you know you have to do four years of med school, and then residency is five years, is that correct? Correct, okay. correct. So 
four years of med school. Um, there was a good amount of people who would take a year out for research, which is, which is what I did actually in medical school. And then ENT residency is five years. There are some six year programs, uh, which is basically an extra year of research. Mm -hmm. My program is five years, uh, but in that five years, you become a surgeon of the ear, nose, and throat. So at the end of that five years, you can do general ENT, which is a mix of all of those different components that I kind of discussed and, you know, take care of it all. So it's really, it's really exciting. And then the fellowships, do they vary in length or are they all like one year or two years? How does that work? Yeah, so in general, most of the facial plastic surgery fellowships are one year. There are a couple that are two. And um, most of the fellowships in general are one year. Neurootology, which is having to do with tumors along the hearing and the balance nerve, as well as chronic ear disease, that those are two years. And there are some head and neck oncology fellowships that are two years. But in general, rhinology, skull base, laryngology, and facial plastic surgery, those are one year fellowships. Okay. And you mentioned that you're a PGY5. Congratulations on almost getting to the end. Thank you. Uh, what is a typical day for you? I know it probably varies by rotation, but how do your days usually look? Yeah, so as the fifth year resident, you're kind of the lead resident on the team, as, as you kind of are familiar with. And if you're in clinic, then you're kind of managing all the inpatients, but also kind of seeing patients in clinic. So post-ops, new patients, uh, consultations. And then in those days in general are maybe two days of the week uh, where you're seeing patients in clinic, sometimes three. And then if you're on a surgical day, then you go to the operating room after you see all of your inpatients and you operate all day. And ENT is very cool because some of our surgeries are two minutes long, like an ear tube. And some of our surgeries are 18 hours long because we're doing complex reconstruction of the head and neck. So it really depends on you know how rigorous and what rotation you're on in terms of what you're doing uh operatively but it has so much uh inside of it so it's very 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 cool awesome and i know this varies by location and practice type and you know your contract type but how much can a ent surgeon or a facial plastic surgeon make yeah so it's a surgical subspecialty so you can expect to command a a very a competitive salary for your training. And each kind of different part of ENT, subset of ENT can kind of, there's different averages. In general, you can, you know, think about if you're private practice, general otolaryngology, just finishing five years of residency, there are jobs that you can get for 400, 350 to kind of 450, I would say would be pretty competitive um, and depending on where you are. And obviously that goes up as you're kind of becoming more senior, having, you know, in terms of your uh, productivity, in terms of RVUs and um, facial plastic surgery, it's very similar depending if you're in a hospital practice or if you're building your own practice, really there's no limit, uh, there's no ceiling, it's depending on how much you want to work, how hard you want to work, um, what your um, kind of billing model is uh, for facial plastics in general. If you're pretty successful, you can command a pretty high salary because you are, in general, if you're doing cosmetic, you're kind of billing out-of-pocket procedures. Um, so you get paid well. You eat well. <laughs> gotcha. That's awesome. Um, and not only being an ENT surgeon and you know, facial plastic surgeon, you do a lot of things outside of medicine as well. Can you talk about some of those things? I understand that you're a, yeah. you play the piano, you're an artist. Yeah. Man, you, you really get that. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit Thank about you. It? Yeah, you know, we were just talking before kind of the webcast started. I love to stay busy and I feel like my, my interests outside of medicine kind of amplify my practice. So I'm a portrait artist. I like to work in graphite, charcoal and oil. And I love to play the piano, classically trained and kind of keep up with that as well. I uh, fly planes, so early on in my life, I flew a lot of model airplanes, and my parents were not trying to let me fly a plane, but when I became an intern, uh, there was a local airport, and so I started taking uh, pilot lessons, so uh, flying, and I do a lot of other things, but I like to stay busy um, and uh, stay active, always learning, always trying to get better. That's awesome. Um, if there are some students out there that are interested in ENT or facial plastics or just becoming a doctor in general, 
what type of advice would you have for him? Number one thing, you need to work your butt off. ENT is one of the more competitive specialties, meaning if you, uh, if you don't do well on your step one, if you don't uh, you know, do well with your letters of recommendation, your research, um, there's a good chance that you will not match into the specialty. So no matter what you go into, you really want to master your craft, learn medicine and take really good care of people. So that starts with just studying a lot. So that would be my number one thing. Uh, number two is do what you love and always remember that, you know, it's a gift of what we're, what we're able to do. So, you know, always think back about uh, why you got into it. For me, I had a brother who died and that was what got me into medicine. And when days are hard and rough, I go back to that. And so keep those in mind, work hard, be diligent, and you will succeed. Yeah, and I think that's a really good point. You know, you have to always remember why you chose this path in the first place. Just because the, uh, you know, the years to become, you know, full-fledged attending is so long that um, a lot of people can have doubts, self-doubts, as well as, you know, thoughts of giving up. So it's really important, like, like you said, to have something that you can fall back on. Absolutely. Um, I asked this of all of my guests, uh, three last questions. What is your favorite thing to do outside of medicine? You mentioned some of the things, but what is your favorite thing to do? You know, it, it depends on kind of what thing I'm into at this, at the given moment. Uh, I would say right now, I really enjoy my, kind of getting back into my art and my portrait work. That's kind of what I've been focusing a lot on. Uh, but, you know, if you asked me maybe a month ago, it was, you know, you know, getting up into a plane and flying around. The weather's not the greatest right now. So maybe if I just went flying, that would be the thing that I said. But yeah, <laughs> that, that, that's, I would say that's my favorite thing right now. Okay. And what is your favorite food or entree? Mm, favorite food. I love a good Brazilian steakhouse. I'm not going to lie. I'm a meat eater. Um, you know, nice savory, <laughs> juicy, uh, tender meat with uh, a nice, you know, polished cocktail. That's probably what I would say. Good choice, good choice. And do you have a aspect of ENT or facial plastics that you enjoy the most? I love, you know, taking a patient who, whatever it is, whether it's a head and neck cancer patient who's coming in very distraught, building that relationship, or a patient who, you know, is consultation for, you know, to look better. Uh, maybe they don't like the way their nose looks. And, you know, being able to kind of build the relationship with them, see them throughout the surgical process, uh, see them post-operatively and give them a really good result, whether that's, you know, making their nose look better or their face, make them look younger or, you know, taking out their cancer and following them and, you know, seeing them through that process. I love just watching that happen. So uh, I, that's the part about surgery that I really love. That's awesome. Well, Dr. Truesdale, thank you for coming along with me today and, and joining me. Uh, you're a real inspiration to a lot of people out there. Um, if students or anyone out there want to get in touch with you, would they, how would they be able to do that? Yeah, the best way I would say, I've been mentoring a lot of people actually through Instagram. Yeah. So if you DM me, follow at Dr. Truesdale and then just uh, DM me. That's the best way that I can keep track of me responding to you. And I'll be putting out, you know, I'll be following in uh, Dr. Webb's footsteps and putting out a lot of uh, materials on my IGTV. So you can check that out too. Awesome. All right. Thank you for, uh, you know, all the advice and uh, for the information and just being an inspiration to everyone out here, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And for everyone else, thank you for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe. New videos coming every week. You don't want to miss them. See you next time.